Hi, I'm Christina and this is a book review, rant review of The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. So this is a mystery thriller that was published in 2019 and this is my second novel by Lisa Jewell and at this point I just don't think that she's the author for me. So I tried to read Invisible Girl by her and I really didn't like that one, I DNF'd it and I didn't like this one either. So let me just tell you a little bit about the story. So this is a story told through three different perspectives. We have Libby, Lucy and Henry and all of these people are connected to a house in Chelsea worth millions and millions of pounds. Now 25 years ago police were called to this house after reports of a baby crying. Now when they entered the house they found three bodies downstairs all dressed in black robes and they found a healthy baby girl upstairs who was 10 months old and she was in her crib and she was absolutely fine and it seemed to be some kind of suicide pact and with everything in the house, or basically what wasn't found in the house, it's assumed to be some kind of cult. Now, we follow this story both in the past and in the present, seeing these three different characters. And yeah, I just, I really, really didn't like it. And I will tell you exactly why. So for me, this was just a really disappointing read overall and it was just really, really underwhelming. It's had so much hype, so many great reviews and I have to say, I just, I don't understand the hype for this one. I just, I didn't like it at all. I think one of the things I didn't like is that it is overly long. It's just over 450 pages. It's very, very long. I think the beginning um, is a little bit slow. I think a lot of the chapters in the beginning with Lucy, oh, I just, it, it wasn't engaging. It just, I just wasn't connected to it. And then that brings me on to my next point, which is I wasn't connected to any of these characters at all. Just, I didn't feel anything for them. And I think that definitely affected my enjoyment of the book because yeah, I just, I wasn't particularly interested in them as people, any of them at all. And I think it's rare to find a book where you don't connect to anyone at all. So yeah, that was a shame. And the other thing I will say is I thought the premise of this one was excellent in the sense that, you know, you have um, a house and you've got bodies and then there's a little baby girl upstairs who's absolutely fine and there's like cult vibes. And I just thought the premise was excellent, but then the execution of it was just... It just wasn't very good. I just didn't like it at all. So basically, at the very start of the book, uh, one of our main characters, Libby, has just turned 25 years old and on her 25th birthday, she was allowed access to her trust fund. So she was adopted when she was a baby after she was found in this house. And she's going to find out what she has inherited and a lot of the secrets of her past are going to be revealed. And I won't tell you anything else about the plot because I obviously don't want to give spoilers. And that's kind of the setup of this book. Now I will say there are some very dark themes in this and I think that's the thing I disliked about it the most. So we have child abuse, paedophilia, rape, murder, and I don't think she handles those themes very well. Um, they're just the way that it was written, it made for very unpleasant reading at time and I'll touch on that later because there's going to be some spoilers. So I want to get into a spoiler section, I'll get more into that bit. I don't want to ruin it for anyone who does still want to read it. So yeah, I think I have read a lot of books, I've read hundreds of thrillers over the years and I can read some very dark things um, I just didn't like the way that she handled them, it just... It didn't work for me, it kind of just stuck out as, oh, I'm, I'm not enjoying this at all. That was something that was very dark and I, I don't think it was handled well. And that was such a shame, because like I say, I thought the premise was excellent and just the way it all came across, it just didn't work for me. So in terms of not feeling connected to any of these characters, I think one of the reasons for that was they all felt very one dimensional to me. They didn't feel like real, genuine, nuanced people. They felt almost just like caricatures of people. And I was just like, I don't, I just, I don't see it. I don't see them that they could be out there somewhere living. It just, yeah, it didn't kind of ring true for me. And yeah, I just think overall it was very, very disappointing. Now I do want to get into some spoilers to explain why I didn't like it and to talk about the dark themes and because of that but obviously to give you my full thoughts on that I am going to 
obviously go into spoiler territory. So spoilers from here on out, if you still want to read this book, you know, please stop the video now. I don't want to ruin it for you. Okay, so if you're still here, I'm going to talk about some spoilers. And the dark themes that I didn't think were handled well um, are all revolving around the character of Lucy. So in the kind of first third of the book, we know that she's had a very abusive relationship. Her um, ex-husband is definitely abusive. Um, she's had an awful time with him. Um, he's tried to drown her, he's done awful things, he's raped her. Just an awful man, awful relationship, and now she's out of that relationship. Um, and she has still got her son from that marriage, obviously, and she's now got a daughter with another man as well, who that relationship also um, ended, but she was very much in love with him. So that's kind of where she's at. So she's not in a great place in her life in the sense that she doesn't have a job, she can't make money, but she's got her two kids and she's looking after them and she loves them and, you know, she's she's doing okay-ish. And now she goes back to this man who is he's just awful. He's a horrible, horrible character. And um, we get to the scene where he is going to rape her again and I just think she does it, oh, it doesn't work very well. It was very unpleasant and I'm not sure how much it was really adding to the story and just to feel like the character of Lucy um, would go back to this man after having spent so long getting away from him and she's doing it to get some passport so she can get back to England so she can obviously see the baby, Serenity, Libby and I didn't like the way she handled any of that. I feel like for the character of Lucy it was just it was an awful thing and uh, it was just written so I don't know, it was really jarring, I didn't like it. I just didn't like it at all. And I've read some, obviously, rape scenes in books before and very dark ones like The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and I just thought this was just written badly. It just, no, it wasn't good. So also with the character of Lucy is what happened to her when she was um, a teenager, when she was still a child. So in this house, we obviously find out that there is a baby and that is Libby slash Serenity. Um, and at one stage, um, Lucy is having sex with David when she is only 13 years old and he is 41 years old. And then soon after that, she has a baby and it is presumed by all that he is the father of this baby. And now nobody does anything at all. And obviously it's paedophilia, it's statutory rape, and it's just, it's just kind of brushed under the carpet. And I think the main thing that just felt so strange is the sense that the mother of her who had also um was having a baby with the same man david and i know you can say yes she's in love with him or she's infatuated with him she's very much under his spell and she believes in all of his philosophies and his ideologies but then as soon as you know her 13 year old daughter is pregnant supposedly with this man she doesn't do anything at all she doesn't contact the police, she doesn't remove this man from her house and kick him out, she doesn't remove her daughter from the house if she can't kick him out, she doesn't leave with her daughter, she doesn't do that, she doesn't, she doesn't tell anyone, she doesn't even shout at him or attack him or raise her voice, she's just like, you know, it's a baby and we should all be happy and it was awful, I just, I know you're trying to show me that this character of the mother is under his spell, infatuated, believing in the cult. But I just feel like there's a point, a breaking point, where she'd be like, no, no more, that's enough. And I feel like for any mother, that would have been the point, obviously. Um, but no, it doesn't happen. Now, obviously, one of the other adults in this is the father of Lucy. Now, obviously, understandable, he can't do anything. He is uh, basically bedridden at this point. He can't speak. So he genuinely can't act. He's not in and like the capable of you know acting or doing something about this but the mother absolutely is and I know you could say she is still grieving from the loss of her own baby but you know this is her daughter too and she doesn't do anything at all and it doesn't feel real it, it doesn't ring true I just I know you can say you can't argue with what characters choose to do in the story and people's motives but I just feel like she would have done something at that stage. It was it was a massive thing and she just she didn't do anything at all. Now, the other adult that could have done something is Birdie. And again, she's in a relationship with David. He seems to be in a relationship with basically all of the women that aren't his own daughter. And Birdie doesn't do anything either in the sense that 
she's going to raise this baby as her own with David and she isn't able to have children herself which I don't again I don't really think that like feels true so Birdie kind of joined this cult if you will when she was in she was an adult she was in her 20s so my point is that she's lived outside of that in the real world you know with kind of normal people for years and years so she knows that this is wrong like she knows that it's wrong she's not grown up in this environment where she, she doesn't know um she genuinely knows that him having sex with his 13 year old girl is not okay but she doesn't do anything she just she's just like yay we're gonna have a baby i just i didn't like it i thought it was awful um at that kind of point i was thinking about dnfing it it was just no i just didn't like it obviously um now the point in which I was gonna DNF it. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna finish it. I hadn't finished a few books for a while. I kind of put things down, not pick them up. And I was like, I just wanted to see where we're gonna go with this. How are we gonna, how are we gonna finish this? How are we gonna have some kind of resolution? Are we gonna have some repercussions for people? And not really. So in the sense that the husband of Lucy that raped her, he does die. She does murder him. Um, she kind of attacks him as he is raping her and then she covers up the murder and we, we assume that she gets away with that and it's assumed that he's involved with criminals and they're probably involved but there isn't any like true repercussions of like in the sense of how did he how he treated her and everything that's gone on so yes he's died so obviously that is a repercussion but nothing was ever like resolved in that sense and then in terms of what happened with lucy with david yes david dies again obviously with the whole Henry's kind of murdered them but kind of a mistake he was hoping to drug them and kind of just keep them unconscious and he wasn't hoping to kill them and you could argue whether that's true or if he was like a murderer I mean you can argue any of that you want until the cows come home but basically yes David does die for sure but he doesn't ever have to kind of answer to the fact of how he's treated Lucy in the sense of there's no repercussions there and even years later no one kind of comes out and tells people about this and I appreciate at the end the journalist keeps his mouth shut and he doesn't follow the story because he's fallen in love with Libby and okay I, I appreciate you'd have to put that first but there was no like true repercussions for the bad people apart from they just kind of died but more by mistake than like <laughs> by like proper ideas and yeah I just I really didn't like it didn't think those dark themes were handled well and the kind of like child abuse and all of that like again there was no true repercussions um I think that's the thing that was you know really just I just didn't like it at all <laughs> in terms of characters motives I I don't feel like the mother of Lucy's characters ring true they don't seem plausible they don't seem feasible I feel like she would have genuinely done something about what was happening to her daughter and just not long before she was a very wealthy woman she was a socialite she was attending parties lots of people knew her I feel like she had a lot of confidence she had a lot of gumption I feel like yes okay she might have been taken in by this man but I feel like at that point she would have kicked him out done something you know done something productive um, but also in terms of things feeling implausible and unlikely, it's the actions of the police in this book. So obviously they have found a house and they've got three bodies and they have a healthy baby upstairs and they know for a fact that there are missing children from this house. Nobody knows where they are, nobody's seen them. Now they don't seem to like conduct a thorough investigation of like the house and the gardens because we know for a fact that there is the body of um, a stillborn baby in the garden. We know that there's also the body of a cat, um, a tailless cat in the garden. And there's also the body of Birdie on the roof. And Henry actually 25 years later goes up there and kind of takes her body apart and disposes of her body. So when the police arrive they found a house with three bodies baby upstairs missing children and yet they didn't they didn't like search the house and you know the garden for more bodies because you know it's very possible and unfortunately very likely that that is possibly an option um and yet there's all these bodies to be found and nobody finds them i mean birdie was just up on the roof forever and they never 
they never found her or they didn't find the other two bodies in the garden so it seems very unlikely and also the fact of the baby um libby serenity when she's found um, nobody seems to do a DNA test on her or tries to like see who her actual parents are. Now I know that the suicide note says we have a 10 month old baby and her name is Serenity, you know, please look after her. But um, I feel like they would have tried to do something about this baby, like there might have been other people out there that are related, you know, there could be grandparents, aunties, uncles, someone who could, you know, raise the child. I feel like there would have been more effort put into finding out, you know, her parentage and, you know, who she's actually, you know, who she belongs to. But um, the fact that she's actually Lucy and Finn's baby, so she's not actually the baby of the mother and father who have died, or of David even, when we think that's the option. She's actually the child of Lucy and Finn, so she isn't related to, well, she's related to them in the sense that she's actually the granddaughter of both. She's the granddaughter of David, because Finn's his son, and she's the granddaughter of the two parents, because Lucy is their daughter. But yeah, I just, just the whole kind of police thing, it just seems... It just seems unlikely that we wouldn't try and find out who she is and the whole fact that they didn't find any of those bodies i just it just seems it seems so unlikely and now also talking about characters that do things that don't seem feasible or plausible is that of the doctor so we know the doctor was like the private doctor of the family of the father as soon as they find out that they don't have any money anymore he just he disappears and he just sends him off in an ambulance and and that's that but his actual kind of reaction, so it's been years later and you find on your doorstep a teenage girl and a teenage boy and they're both in an awful way, they're malnourished, they're not good and they say that there's a baby and all he does is kind of like, you know, he has a duty of care to kind of look after them, he kind of like patch them up, you know, they're dehydrated, puts them on a drip and then he just contacts someone and just sends them off to France. It's just like, do you know, would he not contact the police? And I know you can say he didn't contact the police because he does himself, he's involved with criminals and he obviously doesn't want a spotlight on himself, he doesn't want people looking into his business. But there must come a point where he's like, something's awful is happening in that house, like something really, really bad's happening. So if his kind of small criminal dealings, are they even likely to be looked at if he's just like the wonderful guy who happens to help them? And then how much are they gonna really dig into that? I don't know. So he just takes these two teenagers and just ships them off to France and that's it. He just abandons the whole situation. I just, he's meant to be an educated man, you know, he's a doctor and even though he's now involved in criminals, one would maybe assume that he's kind of gone to be a doctor, you know, for good, like, moral reasons that he wants to help people. I just, and he didn't, so I just, I don't know, I just, I thought it was an odd choice that nobody intervened and I guess the fact, okay, he's got criminal mm, ties, but you know, so yeah, I thought it was really disappointing. I really didn't like it. I thought the dark themes were handled really badly. Um, I think if any of those kind of themes are something you don't want to read about, I wouldn't recommend this book. I mean, overall, I wouldn't recommend this book. I don't think it's worth your time. I don't think it's very good. And obviously, you know, everyone likes different things and everyone has different kind of tastes and that's great. So if you enjoyed it, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. But I really, really, really hated it. So I think this is the end for me and Lisa Jewell. Now, obviously I didn't like Invisible Girl. I did not like this one. So I think that's just the end of me reading her books. Now there is actually a sequel to this one and I was interested in reading it until I, until I read it. Um, I don't think I'm probably ever gonna pick it up. I guess it ends in a way which is interesting in the sense that uh, we know that Libby and the journalist are gonna go off and they're gonna try and find Finn, who is Libby's father. And we know that he's a safari guide. And then right at the end, Henry's like, oh, is there room for one more? <laughs> You're gonna go and go and see Finn. And we at that stage probably think he's a murderer. He's always been obsessed with Finn. He maybe tried to kill Finn. He certainly kept him up, like locked in captivity. And um, there's a lot going on. He was poisoning him, you know, um, he was trying to, I guess, make him love him. He said it was like a love potion. It was a very twisted. There was a lot going on. Henry obviously doesn't have good intentions for Finn, so I'm guessing it's going to go somewhere like that. But I just don't think I care enough to find out. So yeah, I didn't like it. I gave it two stars. Not one star because it wasn't, 
like a bad book, shockingly bad. Just two stars, it wasn't my cup of tea, I didn't like it. So yeah, if you have read it, I would love to know what you thought of it down in the comments below. Um, and if you've read any of her other books, if this one, you know, isn't that great and you've read other ones by her that are really, really good, definitely let me know that too. Because you never know, I might pick them up again one day. I just said that I absolutely wouldn't, but you never know. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Please do like the video if you've liked it and please do subscribe if you'd like to see more of me talking about books. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.